Hello, and thanks to you all who follow the Arata Academy's work on professional and personal development. I would like to invite you today to meet another endeavor of ours related to the area of well-being. We have a new channel for it, and it is the NetherGood English channel. Today I want to share a tip about the proper functioning of our brain and our food choices. As you may have seen on our focus course, what makes all the difference is the ability to concentrate. What makes all the difference is your power to focus. That represents everything we want to do. And you have not been yet in this course, you can go to arata.se slash focus course. Our brains consume a lot of energy. It is curious that although they don't do physical work like our muscles, our brains make up a big part of our daily oxygen and energy consumption. So it does make sense to ask what kind of fuel are we using to feed our brain? And by reading the traditional medical research, we find that numerous works claim glucose to be the brain's highest energy source. But more and more researchers are saying that the brain doesn't rely solely on glucose. In this video, I present the arguments of Dr. David Perlmutter, who argues against the notion that we need carbohydrates and glucose to feed our brains. Instead of carbohydrates, he recommends using fat to feed the brain. And he mentions that the brain works much better when we start burning fat in a ketogenic diet. The name derives from ketones, which are fat. Dr. Promoter says that ketogenic diets have been used to treat epilepsy since the 1920s, and today they are being considered as help to deal with Parkinson's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's syndrome, and even autism. Good fats help the brain function well. This is a quick video, it's not going to go into details about the book. If you think this is an important matter, I can make more videos in the future about it uh, in the not too good channel, but today I just wanted to share an overview of the work and the main idea that excess carbohydrates raise the level of glucose in the blood, causing inflammation and damaging the proper functioning of the brain. This book's recommendation is to start a low-carb diet while introducing high-quality fats such as fish, meat, eggs, butter, avocado, nuts and olives. I agree with the idea of including high-quality fats in our diet, but we have to run away from the wrong fats, the trans fats. In a very simple way, we can prioritize the carbohydrates coming from sources such as vegetables and fruits, and we want to avoid excessive carbs from grains and sugar. My current view on this is that there is no single formula out there that everyone should follow. Well, for some people, it makes sense to get more information about ketogenic diets and to start using ketones as an energy source, but for other people, that may be a little bit too extreme and not very easy to implement. But what is more important is our desire to learn about what is a good diet. And that makes a lot of difference. If it is important for you as well, you can go to Not Too Good. This is why we're going to be presenting this kind of content for us to continue learning together. And if you like the idea, you can help us by giving your thumbs up, but also feel free to say if you didn't like it, because I'm always looking to your comments to guide the creation of new content. And in case you haven't subscribed yet, in English, now we have two channels. One is this one, the Arata Academy channel, but we also have a new channel more focused on fitness and well-being endeavors. That one is not too good. All the best for you.